Bernie Sanders has uh, been pushing his Medicare for All plan again. This is something that he introduced in September of 2017. And the bill, which currently has 16 Democrats uh, co-sponsoring, would expand Medicare into a universal health program phased in over the course of four years. And Sanders claims that a family making $50,000 currently pays $6,200 a month in health insurance. Um, no, mm -hmm. yeah, pays, no, I'm sorry, $6,200 a year under his plan for health it's costs. Under his, plan, under his plan, they'd pay 466 Now, that does, <laughs> you're going to hear that, that sounds great. You're going to reduce your cost by 5000 bucks, but. Yeah, that sounds great. It's going to cost a whole lot more money. Oh, no. Uh, yes, but it will offer comprehensive uh, coverage. This is from Bernie's plan. It will cover the entire continuum of health care from, from inpatient to outpatient care, mm -hmm. preventative to emergency care, primary care to specialty care, including long-term and palliative care, which means death, uh, vision and hearing and oral health care, mental health and substance abuse services, as well as prescription medications, medical equipment, supplies, diagnostics, and treatments. Patients will be able to choose a health care provider without worrying about the care they need and without having to read any fine print or trying to figure out how they can afford the out-of-pocket costs. So, Harry, uh, as a consumer, when you hear you are no longer responsible for, uh, excuse me, uh, that you're no longer responsible for reading any fine print or figuring out any costs. What do you hear? I hear, as a consumer, like, I don't have to worry about it. All I have to do is get up and go to work and know that my health care is taken over and, and, and it's just done for me. <laughs> so this way, when I binge on um, booze on Saturday nights, I can call that ambulance to <laughs> pump me full IV so I don't get a hangover the next day. Sounds right. great. Yeah, no, I hear you no longer have any responsibility, and so you're going to act like a fool, which is what you just said, yeah. but also because you have no responsibility, somebody else will be taking care of things, mm -hmm. and we all know how that's going to turn out. We'll explain in just a moment. Uh, Bernie's ha plan will cost over $6 trillion less than the current health care system over the next 10 years, he claims. He uh, he. he says, uh, here we go, the United States currently spends $3 trillion on health care each year, nearly 10000 per person. So basically, he's taking the total cost of the health care industry and, and uh, dividing that, finding $10,000 per person. Uh, the typical middle-class family would save over $5,000 under Bernie's plan, he claims. Uh, last year, the average working family play, paid $4,955 in premiums and uh, roughly $1,300 in deductibles, to private health insurance companies. Under this plan, a family of four earning 50000 would pay just $466 per year to the single-payer program, amounting to a savings of over $5,800 for the family each year. Businesses would save over $9,400 a year in health care costs. Sounds great, doesn't it? Like, yeah. as a business owner, you're going to mm -hmm. save almost ten grand a year? That's yeah, great. That's awesome. The average annual cost of the employer for a worker with a family who makes just $50,000 a year would go from 12000 to just $3,000. Uh, this plan has been estimated to cost $1.3 trillion per year. Um, so here's how Bernie's going to pay for it. Okay. Hold on to your wallet. Right. Um, now, they don't call them taxes. Got it. The word tax is nowhere in his plan. Good. You Good, because taxation go, is theft. That's right. You, they're, they're called premiums. Okay. okay. You're paying a premium. Don't you love to pay? Pre you buy premium water. Yeah, I buy premium water, premium gasoline. Right. You know. Premium health care. Premium wood. You know. Right. Uh, six point, so here's how he's going to pay for it. Uh, 6.2, and there's also one part of how he will pay for it that was not in his plan mm -hmm. that, the, that the Mercatus Institute uh, figured out. A 6.2% income-based health care premium paid by employers. Revenue, $630 billion per year. So there will be, basically, there will be roughly $630 billion in new taxes on businesses. I thought you said it didn't say taxes. It says premium. Oh, okay. Okay, right. good. Um, a 2.2% income-based premium paid by households. Revenue... Two hundred ten billion per year. So he's going to take another two hundred ten billion from us taxpayers. Uh, new tax rates. So all the tax relief that we just got that has spurned growth in the economy. 
Here are the new tax rates raising another $110 billion a year. 37% on uh, those who make between two hundred and fifty and 500000 a 43% cent income uh, on the five hundred dollars to $2 million range, 48% income on $2 million to $10 million, 52% on income above $10 million. And again, that those those new increased tax rates will now raise two hundred and ten or one hundred and ten billion dollars a year. He's going to tax capital gains, and he floated the old Warren Buffett makes less. You know, I I pay less than taxes to my secretary, and that that gets floated out. Mm -hmm. That old gem. Uh, he's going to tax capital gains and dividends the same as income from work. Ninety two ninety two billion increase in taxes there. Limit tax deductions for ri the rich. Raise revenue raised fifteen billion per year. The responsible estate tax. I don't know what that means, but it's an estate tax that's responsible. Mm. And when Bernie Sanders thinks that a tax is responsible, hide your anus because it's coming in hard. I, yeah, yeah, it's coming in dry. <laughs> uh, revenue raised three hundred and ten billion per year by deleting current tax breaks. So why are we talking about this now? Um, f uh, well. First, the Mercatus Center, uh, and I'll read this straight from a uh, Washington Post article, because the fact-checking on old Bernie has been aggressive, uh, because he basically is flat-out lying again. On July 30th, the Mercatus Center at George Mason University released a working paper on the 10-year fiscal impact of the Medicare for All plan sponsored by Bernie Sanders, which would transition everyone in the U.S. from a uh, mostly employer-provided health care system to Medicare over four years. This report was written by Charles Blauhaus, a former economic advisor to George W. Bush and a public trustee for Social Security and Medicare from 2010 through 2015. Um, so here's a guy involved in entitlements uh, during the Obama years, uh, during the health care debate specifically. Uh, and also, uh, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez keeps bringing it up and mentioning it on August, you know, on August 8th with Chris Cuomo on CNN mentioned th this... This same line that Bernie Sanders uh, is spouting, and let me play you this. This is from the Young Turks, and they also play a video. So when this was released on June 30th by the Mercatus Center, Bernie Sanders posted a video basically saying the following. A Koch-backed organization commissioned a study to try to prove that a Medicare for All system here in the United States, a proposal that Bernie Sanders has championed, would be a complete and utter disaster when it comes to our economy and that it would just simply cost too much. The only problem is the findings of the study actually indicate that the United States would save a lot more money if we had a Medicare for all system. In fact, we would save about $2 trillion over 10 years if we shifted from the current system we have now to a Medicare for all system. So Bernie Sanders responded to this. And before I get into all the numbers and the specifics of the study, this will give you an idea of how complimentary this is toward Bernie's proposal. Take a look. Let me thank the Koch brothers of all people for sponsoring a study that shows that Medicare for all would save the American people $2 trillion over a 10 year period. A Medicare for all healthcare system would save the average family significant sums of money. It will do that by substantially reducing the administrative costs now taking place as a result of the billing, bureaucracy, and insatiable greed within the insurance industry. Here is the bottom line. If every major country on earth can guarantee health care to all and achieve better health care outcomes while spending substantially less per capita than we do, please do not tell me that the United States of America cannot do the same. All right, so Bernie's full of crap, and here, yeah, let me yeah. explain why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those wondering about the Koch connection, the Koch brothers who have donated millions of dollars to George Mason University and uh, the, the Mercatus Center, which is a libertarian-leaning think tank, and Charles Koch sits on the center's board of directors, Blauhaus told factcheck.org that his work is not influenced by any donors to the Mercatus Center. Um, so, you know, what Bernie's saying sounds great, doesn't it? Yeah, oh yeah, we say Trillions of dollars over 10 years. And I'm going to get better health care. Right. It's going to be better, just like everyone else is. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> now, I read the study. I read the Mercatus Center report last night, went through it, uh, highlighted a bunch of, of very interesting things, and 
you know, if if you're really interested, after we kind of go through some of the highlights here, uh, we we can talk about what they found in in more of the details. But um, a lot of it is just in the abstract. So let me read the abstract of the report by uh, the Mercatus Center to you. The leading current bill to establish single single payer health insurance, the Medicare for All Act would, under conservative estimates, increase federal budget commitments by approximately $32.6 trillion during its first 10 full years of implementation, assuming enactment in 2018. This projected increase in federal health care commitments would equal approximately 10.7% of GDP in 2022, rising to nearly 12.7% of federal GDP in 2031 and further thereafter. Doubling all currently projected federal individual and corporate income tax collections, doubling all the taxes we take in now would be insufficient to finance the added federal cost of the plan. Ooh. <laughs> I thought we were going to save money. Right. Uh, it is likely that the actual cost of Medicare for All would be substantially greater than these estimates, which assume significant administrative and drug cost savings under the plan, and also assume that healthcare providers operating under Medicare for All will be reimbursed at rates more than 40% lower than those currently paid by private health insurance. Uh, so the part that he left out in his plan that it, it that is in the law is that he's going to treat all healthcare providers, doctors, mm -hmm. physicians, anybody involved in the medical industry as Medicare recipients where they will be paid 40% less than what they're paid by private insurance. <laughs> so listen, I'm not an economist, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. but I do have a libertarian podcast. So, uh, close enough. Right. So we're going to greatly expand Access for all. Mm -hmm. We're going to increase uh, roughly the the study says eleven percent increase in demand mm -hmm. because the people who don't have uh, it's free health care. Yes, Harry, uh, you're going to get free vision, free dental, free counseling, free whatever you want. Any anything involving m medical will be covered under this, and we're going to pay everybody who's providing those services forty percent less than mm -hmm. they make now. Correct. How do you think that works out? Um, personally, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, I really see, especially like, you know, cause I, I started thinking like, what if someone told me that I had to make do my exact same job, but more, but do it faster, do right. more of it, supply, right. support more people, but I'm going to get a 40% decrease. And you're going to work for a federally uh, governed bureaucrats. Do I get to be on the federal retirement plan? Of course. No, you don't. Oh. The, the workers <laughs> do. <laughs> right. <laughs> no. No, I'm retiring. Or I'm going to go do something else, so I'm going to... So so really where Bernie gets the numbers that this saves money was that he read to page two. <laughs> hmm. But he didn't read the other 22 pages of this thing. Uh, because what what the guy did is he basically went through Bernie's numbers and ran Bernie's numbers and found there'd be a two trillion dollars, uh, like yeah. it would be, not even a two trillion dollar. It it comes in about ten billion dollars less. Yeah, it's like one one point nine. Right. It it goes from three point eight five nine mm -hmm. under our current situation to under Bernie's three point eight four nine. Ooh. And so that's where they get the that's where they get the assumption that this is the the Koch brothers saying that their plan would uh, save money, but the reality, as the paper goes on to lay out, is that Bernie's numbers are very hopeful. Mm -hmm. You know, they talk about the increased demand and utilization. As I said, an, an eleven percent increase. Mm -hmm. uh, there are no copays, so people have no skin in the game. There's no additional revenue coming in to to any of these providers so there's no instant money it's all medicare reimbursements um so you know for instance there's no vision uh is it, uh, yeah there's no vision currently so i can get like medicare. seven pairs of glasses right uh so provider payment reductions uh, they say to offset the substantial cost increases created by stimulating additional consumer demand and utilization of health care Basically, more people using it. 
Uh, the bill would constrain expenditures by subjecting health care providers, including hospitals, physicians, and others, to Medicare payment rates. In 2014, Medicare hospital payment rates were 62% of private insurance rates. Medicare physician payment rates were 75% of private insurance rates in 2016, per the terms of a couple of acts. Are, and they're pro projected to decline sharply in relative terms in future years, falling below 60%. So doctors who have an, a tremendous amount of school debt and have put in a tremendous amount of hours to get where they are are going to see a 40% reduction in their pay. And they're going to have to wait for Medicare to reimburse them on a level that is no longer just servicing elderly people over 65. It's now the entire nation of 340 million people. Jesus. Which a lot of those people who do that, their debt up to their eyeballs everything right. is leveraged everything is mortgaged to cash flow because of pay how they do their payments anyways right oh man like the doctor bubble <laughs> for example in 2014 mm. hospitals were reimbursed just 89 percent of their costs of treating medicare patients and 90 percent of their cost treating medicaid patients losses that were offset by hospitals collecting private insurance reimbursement rates equaling 144 percent of their oh. costs. So yeah, I think the way that they get that number, the 144% is that, you know, uh, it's not on the books in December, so it's paid in February, and then that goes into that year. But right, yeah. um, yeah. it's a fiscal year thing. But that 89%. So 10, 11% of the time, Medicare and 10% of the time, Medicaid just don't pay their bills. Correct. They don't. They take forever. Right. Yeah. So you're just expected to work for free. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why a lot of doctors, some of like the smaller practices, they just don't take it. There's like either take private insurance or they let you pay in cash. Right. You know, um, it's which is like fun, funny is because like you can almost use like Medicaid like, to get like forced in like different part of the line. Like it's so much easier for me to get Gunther coverage using like uh, just my regular insurance, even though it costs me more, even though. Right. But she technically has a Medicaid card because she qualifies her for being a just uh, being in the NICU. Just right. because she was born, the, for, like gave me a Medicaid card. I was like, but I've got insurance for her. Right. But she qualifies. So yeah, you know, which they love, but they'd rather take both. Like, so they take the, <laughs> which is funny. When so every time I do anything with Gunther, they do everything on like my Anthem um, card. Right. And then all the leftovers, they let they just send it over to the Medicaid because whatever that'll pay off the, you know, whenever that pays off. Right. We've got their Anthem lease paid. You know, right. and we'll just wait for the for the you know right. the Medicaid, money. which it was it, okay. So <laughs> we've gone through this. It's like this it was like, to me, like we've gone through this gigantic song and dance before. Like every time anyone on the left really started doing the whole like medical thing, well, like and the whole, when they were talking about this, going after administrative fees and doing stuff like this, it's but a lot of the bureaucracy that they're talking about saving off. Didn't they add on with Obamacare? It yeah. wasn't as all this they added on to, and they talked about how this was going to raise fees up. The main yeah. reason that everyone pays so freaking much for medic, uh, for health insurance right now is be is because of an effect of, of Obamacare and the, some of the unintended consequences that we learned from Obamacare. Because they either raise stuff up, push doctors out of different systems, right, or that people just found different ways to like abandon the system all you know altogether. So what did they think this was going to do? Oh, he's got a solution for that. Oh, okay. Which we'll get to here. Good cages? Is cages? <laughs> um, so the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Office of the Actuary um, has projected that even upholding current law reimbursement rates for treating Medicare beneficiaries alone would cause nearly half of all hospitals to have negative total facility margins by 2024. The same study found that by 2019, over 80% of hospitals will lose money treating Medicare patients, a situation Medicare for All would extend to a first approximation to all U.S. patients. Perhaps some facilities and physicians would uh, be able to generate heretofore unachieved cost savings that would enable their continued functioning without significant disruptions. Cost savings in Medicare. Cost savings in the medical field. That's what you want to hear. However, at least some undoubtedly would not, oh. thereby reducing the supply of health care services. At the same time, the M4A sharply increases health care demand. Uh, it, is, it is precisely impossible to say how much of the confluence of these factors would reduce the individual's timely access to health care services, but some access problems certainly must arise. 
they're writing in think tank speech, it's going to be a nightmare. Yeah. So when you've got an a decrease in the amount of doctors, hospitals are losing money, they're not upgrading their facilities, they're not upgrading their equipment, they can't afford certain services anymore, and you've got an increase in the people of using it, wait times are going to go up, more accidents are going to happen because more people will be overworked. Mm -hmm. It's a recipe for an absolute catastrophe. Because the last thing nurses need to be paid less. That's right. You know, that's the last thing I want to tell a nurse is, hey, we're going to pay you less? Can you work 14? Well, they'll figure out some crazy new licensure that will allow doctors to not be physicians. You know, that it's. I don't know what a nurse practitioner is, but they're. I've been told they're like, they're like doctors, but mm -hmm. they can't do certain things that doctors can do. There'll just be more of those morphing, and the whole licensing system will eventually, 50 years down the line, be a complete joke, if the country is even still in existence by then. Turns with the, I'm just going to turn Eskenazi into the death camp, because <laughs> there's not enough people. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, man, that's... Oof. Bernie's going to fix it's, drugs. And Go the, ahead. And the other thing with it is like the cascading effect, right? Right. Of the whole thing of because if a doctor's making 40% less, that means they're not buying the Maserati, the Porsches, and stuff like that, the, the luxury cars. Right. They're buying Toyota Camrys. Right. So all the mechanics that went through all this schooling to work on Mercedes, BMW, and all these high end luxury cars. They're out of work, right. but they're so what they're going to do is output the Toyota the mechanics because sorry they've been working on high end vehicles and high tuning cars for like years. They're they went through more schooling than you did to work in your Toyota Camry. Right. Sorry, they're, they're going to you know unless you're ASC certified, they're going to knock them out. So they just got this hat, massive cascading effect as everyone gets slid down that forty percent rabbit hole down. Yeah, well, when you massively increase taxes. And then you also increase, on top of that, another $20, $30 $30 trillion. Mm. There's not a lot of margins left for people already. Then you take that down. And then since the <laughs> baby boomers are getting out of the system, right? You can't even double the current rates that they're t taking in taxes <laughs> like to pay for this thing. So you get the millennials and the Gen Xers, so they make them make less, which they've already paid less into Social Security anyways, making <laughs> the pyramid scheme topple faster right to make the system crumble faster actually i'm down for this plan let's break <laughs> the system down so bernie's gonna fix drugs he's also gonna uh, fix the drug system well, pri price fixing or actually fix it uh, <laughs> that's a good question <laughs> um generics have uh he's going to oh, no. pr promote the use of generic medications to the greatest extent possible generics have prices 70 to 90 percent lower than those of name brand drugs but they already hit make up roughly 85 percent of all prescription drugs sold so, Harry, what happens when uh, when Eli Lilly, which is you know a huge yeah, company like, here in Indianapolis, yep. um, what happens when they no longer can even really sell? It's not not illegal to sell them, but there is no marketplace because the government has now regulated that they make them generic. What happens to Lilly's ability to innovate? They, they can't. They can't afford the R and D. They can't afford to go through the whole approval process. Yeah, all that research they just can't do here inside the United States, which is like the you know lead driver of the entire world. This is where right. drugs get innovated. That is why Roche, Roche and Eli are both here in the bio Midwest yeah. to get this stuff done as cheap as is possible. That's why they're here in the Midwest, down the coast. This yep. way, they got cheap land to put half, you know, like and pay these people, you know, to market rate. But you know, they're also making, you know, lots of that money. But they're making it here in Indy, so right. the cost of living is here. So they're helping all these people out, and without that, that's you know, no, no, they're they're bringing those drugs down as cheap as they can possibly can, and they're not really making them generic. You're basically making a name brand, but you're forcing it to a price that someone else. But the generic companies, the reason they give that price because they're just taking the formula and then break into the um and they've taken a formula that's already been made right and, th and that's all they're doing they're not doing a they're, they're not doing the r&d the, the years of r&d and to try to get to, to make something right uh, and the advertisement they talk about through that thing they're advertising it to companies to pick up to think that hey you need to do this that we got the new study please put our drug in your study look what it does that's the advertising they're talking about right so the analysis, uh, think about your belief and trust in government programs. Don't spit your drink out when I say this. This analysis assumes virtually perfect success for M4A and replacing brand name drugs with generics. So they, uh, 
The Then we go on to the administrative savings. The analysis assumes substantial administrative cost savings generated by replacing private insurance with national single-payer insurance, specifically a reduction of seven percentage points uh, in the administrative cost of covering these of those now holding private insurance. So Bernie is assuming that creating a bureaucracy that manages all of healthcare will decrease the administration by 7%. So to decrease the administration, we're going to increase the amount of administration. Have you ever seen a bureaucracy shrink? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I haven't. I've seen people, I've seen uh, school systems get rid of teachers, but not administrators. Right. Uh, and he goes on to note that basically you have to be perfect to hit this mark and nothing probably will happen. Um, we'll ever spend enough. One striking finding is, is evident in the table uh, that begins the study that Bernie seized on. Even under the assumption that provider payments for treating patients now covered by private insurance are reduced by over 40%, aggregate health expenditures remain virtually unchanged. National personal health care costs decrease by less than 2%, while total health expenditures decrease by only 4%, even after assuming substantial administrative cost savings. The additional health care demand that arises from eliminating copayments, providing additional categories of benefits, and covering the currently uninsured nearly offsets potential savings associated with cutting provider payments and achieving lower drug costs. Thus, the expen essential expenditure change would wrought by movement to a single-payer system would be to replace private spending on health care government with spending financed by taxpayers. Now, what does that mean? That means that uh, they are assuming that uh, everything, it, that, that there's not going to be much change in the amount of expenditures and usage. The, the Bernie plan, is it really is a Pollyanna view that once we give people health care, things aren't really going to change that much and we're going to save money. Like if I were to sum up what Bernie thinks and says and the way that this is written is that Bernie doesn't think that really much is going to change in the healthcare industry from a macro perspective, from a, 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 a monetary or usage perspective, but everything's going to get better. The healthcare will get better because the bureaucracy will be in charge <laughs> and the government will be paying for it. <laughs> It's, it's very odd. Like every other program. It'll right. be perfect. It'll work great. So uh, so so that's kind of the, the nuts and bolts. Will the website at least not crash this time? <laughs> You've seen how well uh, Obamacare's <laughs> gone. Um, so Bernie keeps mentioning, and you'll see your Facebook friends, and Ocasio keeps mentioning uh, the $2 trillion in savings, the, that the Koch brothers proved that there's $2 trillion in savings. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, factcheck.org, the Washington Post fact checker, like there's a uh, there's a little piece of me that is just so excited that Bernie Sanders is the one getting fact checked by these people and being found mostly false. Right. Um, but the best one that I found uh, out of all these Which was bullcrap. Still, by the way, by the way, what the whole like it's a half truth. Come on. Right. <laughs> uh, so, well, it, it's not that Bernie's lying. It does show a savings in the outcome of the numbers, but that's because the guy ran the numbers the way Bernie says that things would work out. And so he picked the numbers that would make his plan look like it works. This is what they always do when they're trying to roll one of these things out. They show savings. It won't cost that much. And then, you know, 30 years you look back and it cost four, 14 times yeah. what it's supposed to cost. So uh, Sanders spokesman Josh Miller-Lewis told us that presenting only the additional government cost of Medicare for all, the scary $32 trillion, so Sanders people are pushing back and saying they're only showing the total cost of $32 trillion. It leaves out the larger context. Of course, the government would spend more on health care under a Medicare for all system, but the idea is it would result in less spending on health care in the U.S. overall. You believe that? No. Okay. No, not, not in a heartbeat. You're, you're offering up free services to people who have limited access, and you're taking all the barriers away and 
costs are going to say you're going to spend less. Um, I just watched a bunch of guys in a warehouse, and we offered them free yoga pants, ladies' yoga pants, and the guys took them because they were free. (laughs) (laughs) Miller Lewis referred to figures not highlighted in the report that show that between uh, 2022 and 2031, the current projected cost of healthcare expenditures in the U.S. of $59.4 trillion would dip to $57.6 trillion, under the Medicare for all. Uh, that's how Sanders arrives at this claim that they're going to save $2 million. So basically all of the healthcare industry for this time period is $2 trillion more than if Bernie's plan is enacted. And that's how they're saving the American people $2 trillion. Uh, Blauhaus, uh, the man who wrote the Mercatus study, re- responded to fact check. Um, he basically said that's bull crap because of all the reasons because it's not going he didn't say bull crap but he was just saying uh, that wasn't how it was going to work to argue that we can get to that level of savings by getting rid of the health insurance middleman is inconsistent with my study to lend credibility to the to the two trillion dollar savings number specifically one would have to argue that we can make those 40 percent cuts to providers at the same time as increased demand by about 11 percent without triggering disruptions of access to care that lawmakers and public find acceptable. So he's basically saying, it's unacceptable now. What makes you think it's going to get better when you do all this? Um, so so I want to play you a quick video from Jim. Uh, man, these Greeks, they get me every time. Uh, Jim Pathakoukas from AEI. In 60 seconds, uh, the American Enterprise Institute, which is a conservative think tank, uh, has these, these cool little videos called In 60 Seconds, where they uh, go through and debunk some stuff. And this one is Medicare for all doesn't make sense. Democrats rightly attack Republicans when they promise their math defying tax cut plans will slash government revenue, but somehow not balloon deficits. Well, what tax cuts are to Republicans, single payer healthcare seems to be for Democrats, a populist policy idea that's far more attractive in theory than practice. Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All plan is the perfect example. Recall that economists sharply criticized his presidential campaign's health care plan for severely underestimating the cost of the benefits it offered. It turned out the taxes needed to pay for Bernie Care were twice as high as estimated. His plan would also phase out employer-provided health care, even though some 70% of workers in those plans say they're satisfied with the coverage. In other words, the Sanders plan fails to recognize either economic or political reality similar to many Republican tax cut promises. The economy is doing pretty well right now, so now is hardly the time to gamble on ill-considered popular schemes from the left or right. How about this instead? Stabilize Obamacare, reform the tax code to encourage more domestic investment, and do both in a bipartisan, fiscally responsible way. All right, now lest you think that I am making any of this up, because you uh, listeners are very skeptical, even of Dear Leader, here's the Washington Post fact-checking Bernie Sanders, the Washington Post, the the uh, Huffington the, 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 the Bezos, uh, Amazon, uh, uh, Washington uh, uh, Post. Let me thank the Koch brothers of all people for sponsoring a study that shows that Medicare for all would save the American people two trillion dollars over a 10 year period. Senator Bernie Sanders' plan generously assumes that doctors, hospitals, and drug companies would be paid 40% less than they are now, and that demand for health insurance would jump by 11%. Even if this did happen, the plan would still boost government spending by $32.6 trillion over its first 10 years. Democrats are cherry-picking numbers that even the study's authors say are unlikely to materialize. They earn three Pinocchios. Three Pinocchios out of five for Senator Bernie Sanders. The, have you heard Harry? I'm shocked, actually. Like, when I sat down and actually did the research, because you, like, this is one of those things where you see people say, is talk about this on Facebook, and I haven't looked into the numbers, and I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, it's Bernie Sanders, I know it's going to be a nightmare. Right, yeah. But when you actually, like, break it down, you go, like, did he eat lead paint as a kid? <laughs> <laughs> how is this not so clear how this is going to work out? I don't get how people don't see what you and I see out of this plan. They don't, and they and they just parrot the whole, like, see, look, we're going to save money, and this is what's going to happen. We're going to save money. But, yeah, but it's, 
what I'm guessing is, which I'm hope, hoping, not the lead paint thing, but that <laughs> an intern got the numbers, right? <laughs> All right. And said, boom, boom, here, do this video. We're going to pull this up. Boom. Right in their face. Take that, Paul Ryan. <laughs> right. Open. There's, really I open. just don't get it. Uh, one other thing that you'll hear on Facebook all the time is, and, and this is like posted daily by leftists on, on my wall, we need to join the rest of the industrialized world. We are the only major country on earth that doesn't guarantee health care to all people as, as a right. So when actually pressed on this, Bernie Sanders uh, you know, constantly makes this comment about, we're the only industrialized nation in the world that doesn't guarantee this right of health care. Uh, Sanders' office claims his standard for major nations. So basically, somebody asked, like, okay, you say major nations or industrialized nations. What's your standard? And so that's a good question to ask your Facebook friends, like, what's your standard of an industrialized nation? Mm -hmm. You say this talking point, what do you mean? Right. And uh, Sanders' office claims that his standard for major nations is the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. It does not include Russia or China. Mm. Would you consider Russia and China to be major industrialized nations? Russia, yes. Okay. China, yeah, yeah. I got, I'll give it to them. Um, you don't have to give it to them. Uh, and I don't believe that they... Typically. One of those, I think China has health... Uh, they, I, I would be surprised if the former communist states don't have health care. But the, the OECD does not include Russia or China. Uh, it does not include Mexico... Which does not have universal health. It does include Mexico. I'm sorry, I wrote this wrong. It does include okay. Mexico, which does not have universal health care. Now, Mexico has since the writing of this article changed their law mm -hmm. to force people to buy health insurance similar to Obamacare, but they only have 87% compliance, I think it was. And the United States has like 89% yeah. compliance. And that's a recent thing that they did, wasn't right. it? I want to say like uh, the last like. Three or four years yes. something that they did that. So factcheck.org and uh, PolitiFact, Which, and, and I put it in the show notes, so when you're in a f screeching fight on Facebook about this, you can go and fact check those arguments, and you can go and grab those links, bookmark it, and then bam. Uh, and then when somebody tries to say, the Koch brothers funded a study mm -hmm. that proved that Bernie's... Send them this episode. We're going to yeah. put this out. We're going to chunk it. We're going to put it on YouTube. We're going to put it on yeah. Facebook. Share, share it with them and say, like, Here's the facts. Yeah. Here's the actual facts. Yeah. Which that whole movie really did like hurt Mexico, like it, um, especially in the areas that aren't a lot of the bubbles, like a lot of the farming areas, poor areas that it really hurt. The 80% com compliant that you keep talking about, that was mostly coming from like your touristy towns right. or their version of Sil Silicon Va Valley and Guadalajara. Yep. So. So, those are people that those are the only places that are in Mexico City. Those are probably the only compliant places. So That's why it. is this story relevant to you? It is because Bernie Sanders and the left in general that line up behind this plan want to massively increase your taxes to force you to pay for something that isn't going to work. Right. Plain and simple. That they've already did. They did this. This is just <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is Remember how Obamacare Part Two? Obamacare was going to save it. I mean, it's like, well, we have to pass. But that was always the Trojan horse, wasn't mm -hmm. it? It was always pass the thing that will break healthcare, so we can get a single payer system. Right. Which the thing is, like, healthcare, like, was it broken? Yeah, but it was not as broken as it was. You know, right. a, two years ago. Sorry, two years ago. You know, it's it's. I think like all right, like my the premiums. Like from like projected before Trump, you know, <clears throat> was just out, outrageous. Right. I was looking at thinking of spending. I was like, oh man, I was about to spend like a thousand, maybe fifteen hundred dollars a month. Right. You know, you know, and I don't now. Thank goodness. <laughs> right. You know, but you know, but with, with this plan, who knows? Who knows? Who yeah. knows? All right, Harry. Any final thoughts on this? Um, this seems like the old same smoke and mirror. Price fix controls that the left tries to do. It's the same old tire tactics with the di with different names, different wordings. Not calling taxes, they're calling them premiums, and just sneaking things by the back door and, and progressively making everyone poor by forty percent. Yeah. So don't. D yeah, yeah. Don't let them sneak in the back door. Yeah. Nope. nope. Uh, all right. All right. That music. This is new. 
This is brand new. All right. But what that music means is that the previous segment has been brought to you by our Patreon subscribers. Long ago, opinion journalism only existed in newspapers and magazines, but the internet has given rise to new voices like We Are Libertarians, and few people are doing what we are doing. We're giving you facts and information in an entertaining way, and we are ready to grow into the largest libertarian voice during the 2020 election. But we can only do it if you help us. And many great people are subscribers to our Patreon, which you can find at WeAreLibertarians.com. One of them is Scott Smith. I want to give a shout-out to Scott Smith. He gave me some great feedback on the show that I really uh, found to be helpful. And uh, he wrote in saying, I subscribed to the Patreon because Mr. Spangle seems like a reasonable guy to spread the word of liberty. I like that he doesn't engage in purity tests, and I like that he puts forth an effort to learn before the show. So that is why Scott donates. If you are a Patreon member, please send in a testimony and I'll read yours. Become a citizen at $5 a month and get our bonus content, CD quality audio, and a commercial free show before anyone else at $10 i got to keep the music going. At $10, Nobility gets access to an exclusive Facebook group and a notification to join the live stream and chat with us during the show. Members of the Royal Court at $25 get a poster and free shipping in the new in the new We Are Libertarian store. And you can also join the Emperor's Circle at $100. And you get to send in on our show. And uh, we're looking forward to you joining at WeAreLibertarians.com or Patreon.com slash WeAreLibertarians. Special thanks to Craig DaCosta, Brandon Luke, Jason Doolittle, Christy Avery, and now... Paul Jonathan Eads Jr. for being $100 a month subscribers and members of the Emperor's Circle. And also welcome to Jake Middaw, Zach Spoonamore, Shira, and Jacob Norton for joining in the past week. We thank everybody that supports our Patreon because you are the one that makes this thing grow. 